What's up, people? This is a 360 S5 robotic vacuum, and it actually belongs to a friend of mine who asked me if I could look at it after he tried to get some assistance from the company itself, the uh, manufacturer, and they basically told him that it was going to cost too much to repair and to just buy a new one. So the main issue with this thing is that it claims that there's no dustbin installed when in fact you can see right there with your own eyes that there is a dustbin installed. And if I power this thing up, it takes a second or two to come up. So as you could hear there, it said that the uh, dustbin was removed. And some people may be saying, well, maybe it doesn't have the uh, dust uh, filter installed. Well, actually it does. And if it did not have the dustbin installed, then yeah, that would make sense. The way this detects uh, whether or not there is a, a dustbin installed is by using that small magnet that we can see a little square one that's actually attached to the uh, filter assembly. So if there's no filter installed and you installed the dustbin back into the robot, it would still tell you that there's no uh, dustbin installed. So that magnet interacts with a small board that's right there behind this wall. And I believe that I have found the problem. So I'll bring you in real close and we'll see what the issue is. So if we get a real good uh, close up of that board, we can see what looks like corrosion right above or where these uh, two capacitors are, it says C3 and C1. There's also one via that's right there, right next to, or right in between the uh, three and the one. So I think that may have something to do with why this thing is not working. So that magnet basically activates uh, this uh, component, that, that little SOT23 de looking device that says U1. So that's going to be a Hall effect sensor. And so when there's a magnetic field on the opposite side of it, which would be that little magnet on the filter on the other side of this wall, then this is able to communicate with the microcontroller in the unit to uh, tell it that there's a dustbin installed. So whatever uh, corrosion has damaged in this area is probably what's stopping it from working. So I'm going to remove the board and we'll clean it up and check for continuity between uh, traces. Uh, I have a feeling that VIA is going to have something to do with it. And we'll see if that gets it working once again. Well, I just had something interesting happen. So none of the LEDs around the buttons or on this other small board uh, where the uh, reset button is and the Wi-Fi indicator uh, LEDs are. None of that had uh, lit up. As soon as I disconnected this board, everything lit up and I turned off the unit. I turned it back on, but they didn't come up again. So I don't know if those LEDs not coming on or whatever has something to do with this uh, little board as well. So I guess uh, once I fix it, uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, that was completely unexpected. And unfortunately, I was not recording when any of that happened. So I don't have any video of it. And interestingly enough, this board has two connectors on it. So I'm guessing that it must have been used on two different model vacuums that pin to the bottom right looks like it's got a bit of corrosion on it as well so how anything could have gotten on this to uh, corrode the uh, components i have no idea because the small little pocket that it kind of sits in uh, seems to be pretty shielded from uh, most of uh, anything else interacting with it we can see that there's like dust and stuff on this so it's not completely immune from getting stuff on it but it just uh, seems uh, a little unusual I don't know if those uh, little crystal looking things are going to be like salt or something. That'd be pretty interesting. Uh, but anyways, let's uh, go ahead and just kind of brush some of this stuff off first and we'll see what kind of damage we're looking at. So that capacitor definitely does not appear to be in good shape anymore. <laughs> well there, I was cleaning the board with a cotton swab and some uh, isopropyl alcohol and that capacitor completely broke off and now it's stuck to the... It was on the bottom side of the board. Did it fall off? Oh yeah, it fell off. It's now on the, it's now on the bench. There we go. I picked it up with the cotton swab. So yeah, that capacitor is definitely a goner, but maybe we can test it so we can get an idea of what sort of a value it's supposed to be. There's some stuff on the board that I was trying to remove. I'm not sure what this is. It was just making it a little difficult to see if this via went like anywhere down here, but it doesn't appear to, it looks like it just goes to the other side. So that via that goes to that capacitor, we flip it over. It's a via that goes up and onto this uh, bigger pad, and that also has a via. And if we flip that back over, it looks like it goes to one of the pins of the Hall Effect sensor. So if there's an issue with that via that's uh, supposed to provide power or something to uh, that part, then yeah, that's not going to work. I can't quite tell where this is supposed to go. It looks like maybe it goes down and underneath this capacitor. It looks like there's a trace. Or actually, it looks like maybe that goes down and onto there. 
So that would kind of make sense if that's a uh, power trace. Uh, this other pin that looks like it goes to that capacitor as well and then outwards. And then this one looks like it's going to be ground. And that looks like it's connected to that uh, pin of the uh, Hall Effect sensor. So where does this one go? Let's see. Okay, that just goes straight down and onto this other uh, test pad looking uh, pad. And uh, it's got a another uh, V on it as well. So it just goes out to uh, that connector. The other possibility of why there may, may be a connector at the bottom and why there's a V that seems to just go to a pin from this uh, top connector to that bottom one. Uh, maybe this uh, is used as a daisy chain for uh, certain models. Maybe the main cable comes into uh, this four pin connector and then that three pin connector goes off to something else. And then power and ground is also provided from the uh, four pin connector. Not entirely sure, but uh, definitely looks like that's going to be our issue right there. So let's check continuity between this side and that pin and see if it's broken. Okay, so first of all, let's confirm that this trace goes to that capacitor. Looks like that's going to be our, yeah, so that's probably going to be the main voltage input. So it's probably going to be like 3.3 volts or something. And now let's see if we have continuity from this pin over to that pin. And it appears that we do. So it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with that via. Let's see if any of the other pins on the nope that one seems fine and then this one would be fine as well yeah so i'm wondering if maybe the corrosion on between like these two pins or something was causing an issue so if maybe it was uh interfering with the uh, voltage going to this device in some way then that could have been causing issues so i'm going to put it back just the way it is now and see if it if it works again uh, normally. If it does, I can try to find a replacement capacitor that I can put in there. Even though it would probably work without it just fine. Uh, we'll just put something on it. There's the original capacitor. I'll see if I can even probe it to find out what it is. Ooh, that's interesting. It appears to be shorted. So yeah, that would definitely cause problems. Uh, there's been a few times where I can kind of get it to measure. Or give me a, like a measurement. But sometimes it reads as a short. I think the highest I got was about like 8 nanofarads, so I'm thinking it's probably supposed to be maybe a 10 nanofarad capacitor. But yeah, other times it reads as a complete short. So I think uh, leaving this off for the time being is definitely going to get the uh, dustbin to be recognized again. Uh, let's see if I'm right. Uh, there we go. I powered it up. This time the LEDs are working. So maybe it did have something to do with this board. I didn't pop it in down at the bottom yet, but I'm just going to use them. Okay. <laughs> Let's uh, see what happens if I bring a magnet close to it. I'm not going to bother with the dustbin. I just have a, a magnet. Let's see what happens if I bring it close by. There it is. It's... So let me just get close to the microphone. So, yep, that was it. That corrosion on that capacitor had caused a short. Okay, so unfortunately, I do not have any uh, small capacitors that I can use for uh, this particular uh, spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tin the, the pads just to prevent like any more corrosion from continuing. But I think that it's probably not going to be much of an issue if I don't put anything in that spot because uh, this would be the main uh, positive voltage input. And since it's got that capacitor in place, this is basically like a pass through. So from that via on the opposite side, it goes into uh, that other pin. So I think I would be a little bit more concerned if there was actually something else plugged into this connector. But since there isn't, I think that this capacitor uh, being in this spot uh, should be uh, more than enough. Uh, if he's got any issues with this, you know, then maybe uh, we'll take a look at it again. But uh, yeah, as is, I really don't think this is going to be an issue. All right. So there we go. I put the board back in. And now if we install the dustbin back on, back dustbin on. Dustbin so. Dustbin yep, it's working as intended. Oh, and before I go. Just one quick thing about this vacuum. One thing that I kind of liked is that everything seems pretty modular. Like if you remove the screws from the wheel motors, like they just pop out. They have a little edge uh, connector that they plug into. So does the little side brush. 
However, you do have to, you don't have to remove the wheels to take the robot apart, but you do have to remove the side brush. There is one screw hiding underneath it. So once you remove uh, that screw and some of the other ones like around the perimeter, the uh, rest of the uh, robot can come apart. There's also two hiding underneath where the, the uh, roller goes, uh, the roller brush. So you've got to remove those two screws and then this assembly will pop out and uh, expose the two screws. And uh, this dust spin fell out, as you can see, it would be those screws. Actually, it looks like three. There's another one right there on the left. So yeah, just a few tips if you're opening one of these up because you've got a similar issue or something else. So that was it. Just a bit of corrosion, shorted a capacitor, and uh, caused a headache. So <laughs> yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I just got to put this thing back together, uh, give it back to my friend, and it's all good. And unless he's got any issues with it, you know, then maybe I'll see about putting a capacitor back on the board. But I honestly don't think that it's going to be an issue. So we're just going to leave it here for this one. Thank you all for watching once again, and I'll see you guys around the bench.